Who's really running the Time Variance Authority? Hey, what's up, Internet? I'm Dan Casey, and this is Nerdist News. And on today's show, we're going to be talking all about... You know, this... This was nice, but I need to change things up a little bit, so... Oh my god, much better! Wow, about time that we return to these hallowed halls rather than just my actual living room, which is fitting because today's show is also all about time. Specifically, a theory about Loki's timekeepers, those apparently statuesque rulers of the Time Variance Authority. Now, this theory involves infinite bureaucracy, a massive cover-up, and a potentially explosive revelation that could reveal not only what's ahead for the God of Mischief, but as well as other major Marvel Cinematic Universe entries like the upcoming Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania as well. So the question is, what if the Time Keepers, those space lizards who are untangling the very threads of time itself and policing the sacred timeline with their army of quantum jackboots, what if they aren't real? What if there's a sinister cabal trying to gain mastery over time itself? And what if, for once, it isn't Mephisto's doing? Well, don't worry, because we can explain. And if you prefer to read all about it, Rosie Knight has you covered over on Nerdist.com with a text-based deep dive into the potentially terrible truth behind the Time Keepers. Now, obviously, in order to talk about this theory in detail, we do need to spoil the first two episodes of Loki. And if we're right about this theory, that could be considered a spoiler as well. Now, if you haven't seen these episodes yet, or you're worried about that kind of thing, why don't you make like Miss Minutes and hightail it to the nearest computer so you can catch up and then watch this video immediately after. That is not Max. Jerk. Okay, let's get into it, shall we? So what could shake up the sacred timeline even more than dozens of reset charges being sent through time doors to seemingly innocuous dates in history? Well, how about the revelation that the three timekeepers omnipresent in statue form throughout the TVA are actually absent everywhere else because they don't exist? The timekeepers, or whomever's pretending to be the timekeepers, are using these figures as godheads to inspire, influence, and control the agents of the Time Variance Authority while they prune the sacred timeline to their liking. There's a strange Wizard of Oz-like quality to all of these proceedings, the idea that this trio of space lizards behind a curtain dictates the proper flow of time to people like Judge Ravana Renslayer, who then in turn dictates the proper flow of time to analysts, who in turn dictate the proper flow of time to hunters and Minutemen, who then detonate literal time bombs in the form of reset charges to erase what they deem to be branch timelines. Now, as we learn in episode two, Mobius reveals he's never even seen the Timekeepers despite dedicating his entire life to carrying out their orders as filtered through Ravana. And she's particularly cagey during their one-on-one -on -one meeting, alluding to the fact that she has other agents like Mobius who also carry out her bidding. What would you say, maybe I'm your favorite one? Now, obviously, that's the implication. A place like the TVA, it's expansive, we've seen it through the window, but considering how thoroughly they are all caught off guard during this series, it really feels like Mobius is the only analyst on duty, so... Maybe he is, maybe he isn't, we don't know. Good point. Everything that we, the audience, know about the Timekeepers, though, comes from Miss Minute's instructional video about the multiverse, as well as what offhanded information we can glean from people like Mobius, Loki, and Ravana. And while they said that the time-traveling antics of Avengers Endgame were supposed to happen... What they did was supposed to happen. It's hard not to take that as a deflection from the larger issue at hand that the Timekeepers, or whomever's really behind that curtain, they don't want people questioning their grand plans. So who are the Timekeepers really? Do they actually exist? And why, if we live in a multiverse, actually an expansive universe, why are they almost exclusively concerned with events that take place on Earth? In the comics, the Timekeepers do, in fact, exist. In their earliest iteration, though, in Thor 243, they were villains. Originally, they were the villainous Time Twisters created by He Who Remained, the final director of the Time Variant Authority, before his universe ultimately died. Although the Time Keepers are more neutral, generally speaking, in the comics, they've often found themselves embroiled in conflict with the likes of the Avengers, and even enlisted people like Immortus to then kill the Scarlet Witch because of her status as a Nexus being. That's a term that's been popping up quite frequently in Loki thus far as it pertains to Nexus events, branch timelines, and the multiverse. And spoiler alert, Immortus is another variant of Kang the Conqueror, a villainous time-traveling character that we already know is joining the MCU in Phase 4. Now, if you consider this in tandem with other clues from the comics and the show, it paints a darker picture about the Timekeeper's true plans and why they're so single-minded about preventing the existence of the multiverse. Obviously, they claim it's to avoid a Secret Wars-esque scenario of multiple timelines battling each other for supremacy and destroying one another in the process, but we think there's more to it than that. The way that we see it, there are three distinct possibilities to explain who's really running the show at the Time Variance Authority. Now, option number one, Ravana Renslayer is running the show either by herself, with Kang the Conqueror, or on Kang's behalf. 
As we explained in our episode breakdowns, Judge Renslayer, aka Ravana Renslayer, first appeared in Avengers 23 as a 40th century princess who winds up giving her life to save Kang the Conquerors. And this, in turn, leads to Kang making a divergent reality to save her life later on, something that's decidedly at odds with the TVA's overarching mission statement. One of the prevailing theories for why Lady Loki, or Sylvie Laufey's daughter, as revealed by an errant document in Episode 2, is that she's trying to sow chaos across the Sacred Timeline because she's hunting down Kang across history and trying to unseat him from positions of power across space and time. But another possibility here is that Ravana has gone rogue and she's ruling the TVA herself. In the comics, she starts calling herself Terminatrix and wears armor that lets her shapeshift kind of like a certain god of mischief I could think of. And not only that, but she rules over Kang's empire of Chronopolis in the Quantum Realm, which eagle-eyed fans spotted in Ant-Man and the Wasp. And there she wreaks plenty of havoc herself as this time-traveling space princess. So perhaps something bad happened to the timekeepers, and now Ravana is keeping up appearances while she decides the dictates of time according to her own whims. At least that is until a Loki or two gets added into the mix, and everything goes to hell in an Asgardian handbasket. Now, if it is actually Ravana, she could even then flee to Chronopolis after losing control of the TVA by the end of Loki season one, where we then catch up with her and a maybe angry Kang by Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. But speaking of Kang, that brings us to option number two, it's Kang and or the Council of Kangs. And while I'm inclined to believe we won't actually see Kang the Conqueror until Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, there is a lot of history between Kang and the Timekeepers. For those who don't know, Kang the Conqueror is Nathaniel Richards, a 31st century descendant of the Fantastic Four's Reed Richards, who has had numerous iterations, variants, and identities over the years. The most prevalent is Kang the Conqueror, a time-traveling tyrant that essentially wants to conquer all of time as we know it. Now, during the climactic events of Avengers Forever number 12, Kang actually manages to obliterate the Timekeepers. So perhaps this could be the aftermath of something like that, filling the power vacuum they leave behind so he can start cleaning up reality and making sure it reflects Kang's wishes. In fact, there's an organization dubbed the Council of Kangs introduced in Avengers 267 that was actually a group of variant Kang the Conquerors from across the timeline who were then manipulated by Immortus, legally a Kang himself, who tracked down and murdered all the other Kangs in the multiverse to ensure the Prime Kang would fulfill his destiny and become Immortus when all was said and done. I know, I know, comic books, why do they do this? <laughs> Now, of course, this could all be a Ralph Boner-style red herring and the Timekeepers could have been real all along, which then brings us to option number three. The Timekeepers are real, but they're either dead or corrupted. While the Timekeepers and their refusal to let anyone but Ravana talk to them is sus as hell, there's a chance we're overthinking things, and Ast, Xanth, and Vorth, as they're known, are alive and well, and maybe they're just a little bit camera shy. So with that said, maybe the Timekeepers were real but were somehow killed, and now Ravana is trying to keep up appearances so as not to create utter chaos. Because given how deeply they're revered at the TVA, the thought of the Timekeepers dying would be like shouting fire in a crowded theater or telling a kid that Santa Claus isn't real on Christmas Eve. They love these guys. Now, another possibility still is one rooted in the comics. The Timekeepers are not who they seem because they've been replaced by the villainous Time Twisters, their original botched evil incarnations created by He Who Remains. Now, during the events of West Coast Avengers 61 and 62, the Time Twisters secretly replaced the Timekeepers and recruited Immortus to help them hunt down and destroy Nexus beings like Wanda Maximoff. And side note, as we learn in that comic, Immortus slash Kang was actually the one responsible for Wanda's twins, not Mephisto, which is a whole other can of worms that I won't bring up now, even though I just did. This ultimately blew up in their face when Immortus inevitably betrayed them and began trying to conquer the multiverse with himself as its ruler. But then he too was eventually defeated and the real Timekeepers were reinstated. So perhaps this could be the beginning of this comic book arc, which we'll see play out when things go haywire at the TVA, and then Kang eventually comes onto the scene later on in the MCU. But for now, the only thing we know for certain is that despite what Miss Minutes tells us, the Timekeepers definitely have some ulterior motives they're not sharing with the rest of the class. And their ostensibly noble mission to preserve the sacred timeline has some majorly sinister undertones. Now we'll get even more clues this coming Wednesday when a brand new episode of Loki drops on Disney+. Plus. But in the meantime, we have plenty of Easter eggs, theories, and other deep dives just waiting for you about Loki and the rest of the MCU over on Nerdist.com. For now though, tell us, what do you think of this theory? Who do you think is really behind the TVA? Let us know in the comments below, and for the latest and greatest in the world of pop culture, stay tuned to Nerdist.com.